in the previous video, we saw that we could apply a dark mode implementation into Blazor WebAssembly really easily. As you can see, we have the theme here and I can choose between light and dark. And if I refresh the page after selecting dark, you can see that we still maintain the dark theme. Now, what I want to do in this video is to apply the same logic but in a Blazor server application. And you are going to see that there are some slight differences that we will have to take into account. So let's go to Visual Studio and this is the project that we built in the previous video. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the Solution Explorer and I will create a new project, a Blazor server project. So new project here, Blazor up here, and I will say Blazor server. And now I will select Blazor Server app and I will click on create. Now we will be able to reuse a lot of code, but not everything. So first let's fixate this here and I will open the main layout component of the Blazor Server project. And I will just copy everything from here and I will paste it here. What this has is that select that you just saw and also some logic for the selection of the theme. Now I also need to copy and paste some code from the CSS file of the Blazor WebAssembly project. So let me go to the www root directory of the Blazor server project and I will open this site CSS file and I will go to the app CSS file of the Blazor WebAssembly project. And if you remember here we have some CSS variables that we're using so that we can implement the dark mode. So let me copy that and paste it here. And I will also copy some CSS that I have here, actually from here. So let me copy all of this and I will come here and paste it here. And also I have some CSS here in the main layout.razor.css file, this CSS here. And now I will apply it into our CSS file of the main layout component. Let me paste this here. And finally, before we can make our first test, we need to copy this code from the index.html file to our host CSHTML file of the server project. Because if we remember, a Blazor server application doesn't have an index.html file, but it has an host CSHTML file. So let me paste this here. And we're ready to experiment the first difference of our two implementations. First, let me make this the startup project, set as startup project. Now let me press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And we're going to see that we're going to get an error. And we're getting this error because we are trying to use a JavaScript call from an uninitialized method. Let's go here. Let's go to this main layout razor file of the server project. And let me close everything else. Close all but this. And as you can see here in the uninitialized AC method, I am using JavaScript to read from local storage to get the previous selection of the theme of the user. Something that we can do to simply fix this issue is to use on after render async. And I can say here bool first render. And now I can say if first render, if this is the first render of the component, then and only then I want to use this. And also, because I am changing something in this method and that something will reflect on new UI, then I need to say a state has changed. Now let me press Ctrl F5 to go back to Google Chrome. And now as you can see, the application is running and I can use dark mode. And this is fine, but there is a small problem. I have dark mode here and let me refresh the page. And as you can see, for a moment, we could see the light theme. I will keep pressing F5 and as you can see, for a moment, you can see the white background. This is a problem and we wish to solve it. And we're going to do it by using cookies and a singleton service. So let's do that. First, let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is that instead of saving this selected theme in local storage, I will use cookies. So let me go to my host CSS HTML file. And let's go down here and I will create a new function. I will call it at cookie and I will receive three parameters, key, value and days. Remember that a cookie must have 
an expiration date. So that's why I'm receiving a days parameter here. So here I will say var date equal to new date. Now I will say date set time date get time and I will add days times 24 times 60 times 60 times 1000. And what this is doing is that it is allowing me to add today's date and the amount of days that I send. Like if I send days equal to 365, then this is going to be one year into the future. Now I can do the following. I can say document dot cookie equal to, and I can say here key. Let me use backstick here, and I will say key like this equal to value semicolon here expires equal to, and also a string interpolation here, and I will say date dot to gmt string semicolon path and that's it with this i am writing a cookie that we can use now let me copy this and come back here and we change this and i will add 365 for one year this cookie will expire in one year now i need to be able to read this cookie the value of this cookie at the loading phase of my application so for that, I will go to the host CSS HTML file and I will create a model and I will link that model to this Razor page. So let's go here. Let me go to pages and I will create a new class. I will say class and I will call it host model and I will inherit from page model control dot to bring this namespace. Now I need to take this and come back here and say model host model. And now here, I can execute some code when there is an HTTP GET operation into our Blazor server application. I'll say public void on GET. And from here, I can read the cookie. I will say bar theme equal to HTTP context dot request dot cookies. And I will say theme, which is this value that we have here, theme. So I have this value here and now I can say if a string is null or empty theme, if there is no theme, I will just use a default value like light, which is this default value that I have here. Now let's come back here. With this theme, what I want to do now is to put it in a singleton service so that I can access that information from my main layout. So for that, I will create a new class. So let me come here, right click here, add new class, and I will say app data, and I will say property a string theme, and now I will register this app data class as a service, as a singleton service. So let me come here to the startup class, and down here I will say services at singleton app data, and that's it from here. Now let me come back here and I will inject that app data service here, app data, app data control dot, and I will initialize it as a field. And now let me come back here, app data dot theme equal to theme. And that's actually it. With this, I will be able to have access to the theme information from my main layout component. So let me come up here. I will inject that app data service, app data, and now I can come back down here and I can delete all of this. I don't need this anymore because what I want to do is to actually use again the oninitialize method. So I will say protected override and I will say oninitialized. And here I will say if a string is null or empty and I will say theme, and I will say selected theme equal to updata dot theme semicolon here and that's it let's press ctrl f5 to run our application and see if this works we have the light theme i can select dark and you can see we have dark if i press f12 and i go to application and cookies and i press on my site you are going to see that we have theme here value dark and expiration one year from today now let me close here and if i refresh the page you can see that even if I keep refreshing the page, you are not seeing the white background anymore because we have fixed the issue because now 
were reading the value of the theme from the uninitialized lifecycle method of our main layout component. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks!